Hey guys, it's Mrs. Jones, and I am sitting here relaxing after my second day of school. It's actually the the second first day of school because in my district, um, the students have been divided alph alphabetically. So we have half of our class on Monday and Wednesday and half of our class on Tuesday, Thursday. So the first week of school started on a Wednesday um, and we have no students, by the way, on Friday. So Wednesday, we had half our class, and then Thursday, we had the other half of our class. So I just want to share with you some some reflections on that first day. First of all, <clears throat> those of you who are going to be teaching without using air conditioning, I bless you, just bless you, because we have air conditioning in the school, and I found that I just had to have a fan blowing on me all the time um and it because you're just you know the mask is just so constricting and confining i thought it was okay i've been wearing a mask um to work um for a week but it's been mostly sitting through meetings some some small group discussion it's not the same as teaching in front of a class and I feel like I'm, um, my voice, like I actually woke up this morning on the second day and I couldn't talk. Um, and I can already feel my voice going because I think we instinctively talk louder when we have a mask on because we're afraid, yeah, the people can't hear us. And then as you can see, my students have, the district provided these um, barriers. Um, they're plastic covered cardboard um, and so I feel like, again, like I have to talk louder. They're more spread out. They're like, there's a barrier between them and me. And I think that's why I'm having such a hard time like talking. So I can't make this very long. So it's actually kind of funny to stand here and teach when your view is this. <laughs> it's just it's kind of funny. It got me thinking the second day about cars like the movie cars where all the car all the there are no ca human characters there are only car characters so yeah this is what i'm looking at as i'm standing in front of the front of the classroom um <clears throat> and in fact the second day when we did our morning meeting and um i had asked everyone a question the question i asked if you were a car what would you be which is actually kind of a fun question so i'm thinking one of the things i might do is i might get um uh, get like some paper plates at the party store and um, literally make like right there, put a half a paper plate to make it look like a steering wheel. Maybe put a couple of headlights down there. At the bottom. <laughs> I think it would be kind of fun and it would be inexpensive. Um, they won't, wouldn't see them, but it would, I would certainly see them. It would, it would be funny for me. <clears throat> so I do want to share some things um, that went really well <clears throat> on the first day and um, the first days, um, and then some things that I would definitely, um, that I would definitely change. So first of all, what went really, really well for us is we told parents that no parents were going to be allowed in the building, that all teachers would meet their students outside. Um, and that worked out really, really well. Parents were really respectful of that. Um, I didn't have a single child show up without a mask. Now I did have a bunch of children not show up at all, um, but yeah. Um, I didn't have anybody show up without a mask, which is awesome. Um, and we had beforehand, we had painted dots on the sidewalk, um, six place, six feet apart. And so we just stood on our first dot and then just had the students, um, stay on their dot and they really got that. So that's something that's very easy and inexpensive to do. And then we had the parents, um, and again, we told them this in advance as well. Um, once the students went inside for the day, um, we provided the parents with sidewalk chalk, and they wrote messages to their students. In fact, let me see if I can, hang on, <laughs> if I can actually show you what it looks like, because it, it is pretty cool. So I'll show you here, I've got my small group area set up for Monday, we're going to be passing off multiplication facts. Okay. 
these worked out really well too these markers on the wall these six foot markers um, different teachers did different markers so I am going to put up a few more um, some people put things on the carpet I don't know if you can see the messages that the parents left for their for their kids. It was really, really cool. And then I showed you already those those dots. So one thing we figured out about walking up and down stairs, they have, the kids had a really hard time like keeping social distancing. And then of course your class is so spread out when you do six feet. So we did measure it and we found that there is six feet here. So we can have students come up uh, two at a time. That works really well. Um, so s some other things that I worked out that the first couple days is I actually um, had students practice using the carpet squares to figure out, you can see we our carpet has squares, to figure out um, social distancing. We measured it on the stairs um, as well. We measured it on the linoleum squares as well. So basically what I did at first was I took a, um, sorry, a tape measure, and I gave it to the student upside down. So I held this end, they held this end. And I said, I want you to go to six feet. How long is six feet? And invariably my fourth graders stopped at about three feet or four feet. They almost never went the full six feet. So that was a really fun activity to do with them to realize that. That's one of the biggest things that we found is, of course, when they're sitting in their seats, we know they're six feet apart. But whenever we line up or we're walking somewhere, that's the challenge. Um, another teacher that I know, she actually taped, whoops, you're not going to be able to see this, taped two yardsticks together. <laughs> I've got my name on there. And she just used this like all the time wherever they went. So I think I might do that a little bit more too. <clears throat> so that worked out really well. <clears throat> also our washing hands routine worked out fairly well except um kids were just kind of um kind of messy and drippy so um it did help if we squirt we found if we squirted the soap remember these are fourth graders so if we squirted the soap so what we did is we um had them get their soap um get wet get their soap and then they started walking we told them slow walk so slow walk up this aisle around and then down this aisle and that was usually 20 seconds and then they would come back here and again I gave them paper towels because getting paper towels from there just doesn't really work so I would give them a paper towel and then they throw it away over here so that was <clears throat> very very efficient very, very efficient use of our time for hand washing. Um, we did have some, a video that talked about, you know, masks and social distancing and, you know, what to do if they were starting to get hot or they felt like they couldn't breathe. We decided for that, that we would have students, we always have our doors open. I'm just closing it because I'm filming right now. But they could take their mask off in the hall for a five minute break. Um, we also have, let's see if you'll be able to see this. Uh, yeah, so underneath their desk, there's some Velcro for a little, a little sensory break. Um, and honestly, I told the kids, I need my fan going like all the time. I literally like stayed right here because I had my fan. Um, and Sorry, I just had the janitor come in. So one of the things I'm thinking about doing, and this is something that's been really important for the first few days, is to give the students a visual marker. So because I was having a hard time with the whole washing hands and coming around here and kind of congregating, have them 
line their bodies up with the desks. So stay there. And then they can move up to here. Then they can move up to here. Then they can move over here. And that will be able to keep them six feet apart because the desks are, are six feet going this way. So yeah, doing anything you can, markers on the floor, on the walls, to give them that sense of, of six feet apart. Um, because it's a lot farther than you think it is and yeah <laughs> and the whole uh the whole how the whole class is spread out so um yes there's just some suggestions also hydrate 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 that's going to help your voice it's going to help your breathing if you're hydrated um and um let's see what else tips and tricks for your first couple of days. Um, <laughs> I should have written this stuff down because my, my brain is dead. Um, <clears throat> so another thing that we did on the first day was we taught them how to use the technology. We had a lot of parents and a lot of kids who were very, very nervous about using technology. That's why they didn't want to do just technology only. Um, and so just um, helping kids log in, you know, writing, writing your logins down and just already, I'm just taking notes on, okay, who's adept at technology, who's not adept at technology. Um, because if the student isn't mo most likely the parent is not either, um, though, although probably they're going to be some exceptions, but you know, at least if the student is adept at technology, if the parent is not, I know that they can, um, use the, the student can be can be more useful and then also I can I can give that as feedback to parents because a lot of times what we found is that um, students don't like learning online generally speaking and so sometimes they would forget their logins or forget how to log in when really they're just communicating to their parents I really don't like online learning so we can be able to say well look you know so and so is really really adept at their computer skills in in class and every single time they know how to log in they're right there they're even helping other students so um, it's it's an issue of motivation and not an issue of um, technology skill. Um, so we met as a faculty after our first day to talk about what went well and things did go a lot better, a lot smoother the second day. I felt a lot more comfortable, a lot le less nervous. Um, and it's nice because for me, my class isn't split equally. My Monday, Wednesday group is a lot smaller than my Tuesday, Thursday group. So it was really nice to be able to to um, have things more planned out for this second group where I have, I have every desk filled, my Tuesday, Thursday group. I have all 12, so I'm, so I'm maxed out. Um, but I hope this is helpful. Uh, like I said, I am one tired teacher. Um, one of the things that they told us is that we are required to leave by four o'clock so that they can deep clean and know everything that's clean and sparkling the next morning. So we're not allowed to be in the building past four. So maybe that's a good thing. Maybe at, for for once in my life, I will learn to go home early. <laughs> so um, I hope this is helpful for you. Please leave comments if there's anything you want to know about our first few days together and how things went for our elementary school. All right, TTFN, ta-ta for now.